what the court of God is all about. When you pray, most of us just kneel and the enemy kneels with us. He like that pedophilia uncle that we, you know, when we try to go in and think about it, he said, what's wrong, little homie? You know, knowing that he's about to pull our pants down again. Pull our dress up again. It's like, man, I'm trying to find some peace. I sure don't want you in the room. And most of us, when we pray, the enemy kneels right there with us. How long you going to be? Hope you ain't going to be long. Hope you don't tell on me. Whatever you do, don't keep my name out your mouth. <laughs> you better not tell God. You know what the, what the, what the old, old Danny Glover told Whoopi? You bet, uh, daddy, daddy, daddy said, you better not tell nobody. But God, the enemy said, you better not tell God about what I've been doing. And most of us kneel, and we won't tell on him. Because we done made a covenant with him. And I'm going to tell you, there is a place, young folk, listen to me. Where the enemy will threaten you and intimidate you that I won't make it that tough on you if you won't keep praying and telling God on me, I'll ease up off you. I've been walking with him a long time. And he didn't throw that number at me. Now, if you leave me alone, I won't bother you too much, Stevie. And I remember a time or two I left him alone until God showed me the secret on that booger. He'll do you. Amen. He's made a covenant with a lot of people. If you quit going to church, because some folks say, my trouble didn't start until I started going to church. Folks, I, 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 before I started tithing, I had plenty of money. You see, that kind of thought. And then they stop. But I'm going to show you what happens when you pray. Y'all with me? You ready to go? Are you excited? You ready to go? This is going to change your prayer life. Amen. Look at somebody say, this is going to change your prayer life. Okay, now, we just seen in Luke chapter 18 that Jesus gives us an allergy of a woman praying, and she, uh, she's like, uh, goes to the judge, and she says to the judge, hey, avenge me of my adversary. So he uses a courtroom situation. And can't you see this old woman goes and say, my adversary is against me. Avenge me. Stop this, this person from messing with my rights. Amen. But let's go back to the book of Daniel chapter 7. And let's go to verse number 9. And the Bible says, And I beheld till thrones were cast down, and the ancients of days did sit whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool, his throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him, Thousands, thousands ministered unto him, and 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books were open. I beheld them because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake. Uh, okay, I'm going to stop there. Let's read it again. I beheld till the thrones were cast down. This is Daniel seeing the end of time, seeing how God runs the universe. This is Daniel the prophet. And the ancient of days, that's God, did sit whose garments was white as snow and the hair of his head like the pure wool and his throne was like the fiery flame and his wheels was as burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from him. Thousands, thousands ministered unto him, and 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books were open. Praise God. Did you get that? Okay. So, D uh, Daniel is seeing here, Daniel is seeing here the court of God. The first thing you need to see when you pray is that the Lord has a court. God has a court. I mean, what do you see when you, when you pray? Where, where is Jesus? I mean, is he a, you know, playing a harp somewhere? All this matters. 
you know, when we say Jesus is at the right hand of God, what is Jesus doing? Is he, is he off gallivanting? Is he got a hammer nail bill in the house? What's, what is he doing? You say, well, it's, it's not important. It is important that you see Jesus where he is. You see God for what he is. He's sitting on his throne. He's judging. He's judging, and he is knowing everything that's going on in the earth. There is a book, matter of fact, that has your name in it. And if I had time, I'd, I'd go there, but it has a, your name in it in what you were supposed to do and what you were supposed to accomplish in the earth. Do you know before you were ever born that your name was already written? If you were born again, your name was already written and you were supposed to accomplish certain things. You, you had a destination. They call it predestination. You were predestinate Nated to become a son, and you were predestinated to be conformed into his image, and you were predestinated to live a certain length. Mm -hmm. Did you know? You think God just said, Well, I'll just let you live till you're 20. Yo, no, you think God said, Well, I'll let you be aborted. You, you survived that. You were predestinated. You were predestinated to, to get to a certain place, and all the days of your life, the enemy has been trying to cut you off. And cut off your bloodline. This is where I want to start with that. In any courtroom, there is a judge. And in this scripture, God appears as the judge of the whole world. Thousands upon thousands of people are before him. If you don't see him as the judge of the whole world, from the beginning to the ending, then I would have to say that's where you first are going wrong. That he judges everything. He knows everything. The end from the beginning, if you're sitting here believing that what will be, will be, then the devil's already got you beat. That's the reason you can't engage in the final battle for good and, and for evil. You're either in the battle on God's side or you're in the battle and you're a tool of Satan. There is no neutrality. Jesus says, he that is not with me is scattering. You're either helping to gain on the kingdom of God's side, or you're either a fence. Something in your life, what you're doing is giving the enemy a uh, grounds to cause somebody to go to hell, cause you to be lukewarm, and the place where you should be a branding on fire, saving people, or have a prayer life that's out of this world, or have a ministry that's out of this world, or have a, a gift that's out of this world, it's dormant, it's hid under a rock, it's hid in, in, in under the sheets because you got a sex problem, or hid in a crack pipe because you got a crack pipe problem, or hid in an alcohol bottle because you got an alcohol problem, or hid in some type of spirit because you got a discouragement problem, or hid in a lonely, lonely place because you got a whatever spirit that's trying to take you out, you need to understand here today if you don't get a hold of your spiritual life, that is the thing that God is going to judge in the end as to why you could not be all you could have been. Because there is something that is sworn to keep you in a neutral place. And you can't say, I went to church. And you can't blame this church or any church for your neutrality. You can't even blame another person. My husband, my wife, my mama, my condition. But you do need revelation that you do have an adversary. From your birth, like Moses, which means drawn out. You were drawn out of the Nile. You were drawn out of the river. You were drawn out of a bad place. And God educated you, he sent you to school, he taught you how to read and write, he taught you how to work on computers or whatever, gave you skills, but now we still sit disengaged, bound by spirits and habits. Ineffective, most of us. No passion. But the books will be open. 
and what you and I should have been, could have been, will be judged by what we are. And we can all sit here and say, I'm better than her. At least I ain't her. But God ain't say, that ain't the standard, son, daughter. The standard is, is Jesus Christ, and the standard is what's written in this book, your book, that I said you had A, potential, but you doing D work. You did D work. And for most of us, because we were taught, I'll be just glad to make it in, God says you'll still be beat with stripes. And there'll be folk that'll be lost because of us. If you don't be the best you can be in Christ, you're going to be held accountable. Most folk, that doesn't mean anything. They don't care. But if you ever see the reason your prayers are ineffective now, you'll start caring. And you're going to pray like the world's on fire. And most of us pray like we could give a mm. And we say we're Christians. As he is, so are we in this present world. And Jesus says the son of man don't have nowhere to lay his head. He wasn't praying about mortgages every day. He wasn't praying about raises on a job. People have painted us as people that don't care about these things. No, we do care about these things, but not more than we care about the will of God being done. We got to hurry up and get past all of the stuff that the enemy keeps putting in front of us to say, this is more important than the gospel. Most of us don't even believe that the Lord's coming. And the people that don't believe the most is his servants. So the first thing when you kneel, you got to see that God is on the throne. You got to see it so much so and believe it so much so that you believe that heaven could step through the walls of your room at any moment and scare the bejesus out of you, cause you to faint as a dead man. You got to start believing it to the place that you know you are seated together with him in heavenly places. Come on, say something back to me. You got to start believing it that you are not at your address anymore. You got to get lost in the spirit of God to the place and know that when you kneel, it's like Daniel kneeling before his window. It's like Jesus kneeling. You got to believe. You got to believe. If you don't believe that way, then how are you praying? If you don't believe that way, then how are you praying? What you doing? There's only one way to come to him. When you say boldly, it ain't, you can't hear your phone. You can't hear the television. You got to, you can't. You, you, if you know you're not going to get it the first time, but you got to know I'm, I'm before the ancient of days. He's there. Thousands of old thousands is ministry to him, and I'm standing before his presence. Just like a runner practices running on the treadmill, at some point they get lost and think they run through the mountains of Switzerland. They even got videos on them now. And the guys say, come on, come on, you can make it. And you get lost. They put your headsets on. And they think they're running through, through the valley somewhere. Until you can engage. That's why he said secret place, children. Excuse my volume. I'm just excited. Until you can engage, shut the door. Secret place. Shut the door. Secret place. Shut the door. Secret place. Shut the door. Until you can engage. To that degree, your mind got to be in it. Amen. Lord, I don't want to be vulgar, but when you have sex, everybody ain't watching. You got to engage. 
You close your eyes when you kiss. You got to engage. This is my wife. Come here. When you embrace, the light's off. Mm -hmm. You can do it in the daylight, but the light's off. Mm -hmm. You don't know she didn't comb her hair. She didn't put her face on. You got to engage. And when you see them, you see them like when you first met them. You got to see God on his throne. Sit in there. Not off somewhere golfing. That's why the enemy try to distract you and try to bring the boyfriend, the girlfriend, the food. What you got to go do? You can't give up then. You can't toss him a bone. Here, well, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. You got to stay there and focus on it. Father, Father, ancient of days. And you ain't through yet till you get to that. Because in any courtroom, there's a judge. Zechariah chapter 3, you don't have to go there. But there's an adversary or a prosecutor. The Bible says that Satan is the accuser of the brethren. <coughs> Satan, night and day, Revelations 12, stand before God. Listen to me, children. His job ain't to wait and, and try to get you to do something. He stands before God 24-7, and he tells God, you see what Steve done? You see what she done? You see what he said? You see what they done? 24-7, he's the accuser of the brethren. 24-7, you see the lie they told? You see what they didn't do? You see the thought that they had? You see the attitude? You see? You see? You see the words? You see? You see what they done? You see? 24-7, he is the prosecutor. We got the judge. We got the prosecutor. He don't just say, well, I'm going to get you because it's Sunday. He don't say, I'm going to get you through your husband today. He don't say, I'm going to get you because I'm going to send a handsome man your way. He don't just say, well, I'm going to get you. I'm going to send a beautiful woman your way. He don't say, well, I'm going to try to trap you in a lie today. He, he keeps coming before God. He comes to say, they lied and they didn't even come back and ask forgiveness. Then they, they lusted. They didn't even come back. They was watching something they shouldn't have been watching. They don't even ask you for forgiveness. You bless them and they don't even say thank you. He's the accuser of the brother and he goes before God on you 24-7. Yes. And you playing, God's got my back. God's got my back. And God is righteous. But he's got a prosecuting attorney that has a legal right to go before God and tell him you spend more time watching television, watching your cell phone, sending out unlawful texts, coming out the liquor store, looking at somebody else's husband, lying, whatever it is, unlawful sex, Got a bad attitude, talking about somebody which you have no business talking about, slandering somebody's name. Did you see what they said about her? Him? You think you're getting away with it because didn't nobody hear you, but the devil goes before God 24-7. That's his job. He's the accuser of the brethren. And 24-7, everything come out your mouth, every time you wink the wrong way, he telling God what you've done. And you holler, I, I mean, it's under the blood, it's under the blood. That's a lie from hell. It ain't under the blood. It's hindering your prayers. It's stopping your walk. Your prayers are ineffective. So we got the prosecuting attorney. 
And then we got the advocate that can't engage until you pay him. He ain't working pro bono. First John chapter 2, that's Jesus. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father. But you got to engage him. The lawyers just ain't running around knocking on doors. Anybody sin in this house? Anybody sin? I'm willing to forgive anybody that sin in this house. Yeah, a bunch of people in the house sinning, and he just knocking on doors because you live on earth. He died for the sins of the world, but he ain't knocking on doors asking you, Yo, did you, did you? He, he ain't doing it out just through osmosis. He's doing it through his preachers and his believers. But if they caught up in sin and they can't do their work, you in the suit, baby. He has chosen through the foolishness of preaching that you'll be saved. Now, you might have to remember your grandma preached to you Amen. or your grandpa preached to you, but he ain't knocking on doors. The Holy Spirit ain't knocking on sinners' doors. That's why the enemy has got, his, got the church bound. So we can't intercede and pray and have a heart for sinners because if we don't do it, we are his feet. We are his hands. We are his mouth. And if we don't care, they perish. We like all sinner, they ought to get saved. Well, we ought to get on fire too. So Jesus ain't just knocking on sinners' doors. Lord, go to the sinners' door. What's wrong with your behind? Lord, go save them prostitutes. What's wrong with you? So if the enemy can keep you from an altar, he can keep them from an altar. Because ye are his witnesses, said the Lord. So we got the judge. We got the prosecutor. We've got the advocate. And then we got you, the defendant. But here's what needs to happen, children of God. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And here's what you're going to have to start doing from this day forward. And I know some people look all sideways at you when you start talking about demons because the devil is the only one that don't want us to realize that there are dis spirits with bodies that are affecting God's people. That's why we can't pray. Too many people in the closet with you. You're trying to go in there by yourself with the Holy Spirit, but you got six other spirits in there with you. Unbelief, discouragement, fear, impatience, somebody else waiting on you to hurry up. So you can't stay before the one you love long. You left your first love. You can't have a heart for God's people because you have a heart for Satan's people. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 3. Know ye not <clears throat> that you should judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? Do you not know that you and I are called to judge angels? We're called to judge angels. So here's how it needs to go down. When you go into your closet, you need to realize, go to, go to Genesis chapter 1. You need to realize this principle here. Now let me talk to you. I feel that, that line spirit coming now. Here's what needs to happen. It's called the law of dominion. Law of dominion. Say this with me. Law of dominion. Law of dominion. You need to understand this. First Genesis, first, I mean Genesis chapter 1. If you don't understand this, 
it will help you to stay defeated in your spiritual walk. And we don't want that. God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness. <coughs> Excuse me. And let them, them have dominion over the fish. Say dominion. dominion. Now, he said, we're going to make man and we're going to give him dominion. We're going to give him dominion, which means lordship, kingship, and we're going to give it to him over the fish, over all the creeping things. Yeah. Now, stay with me here. Now, you got to listen to this. God dwells in the heavens. Satan dwells in the second heavens. We call them principalities and powers. You and I, we live in this realm where the first heavens are. When we look at the sky, that's the first, first heavens. But when God cast Satan down into the earth, God created man out of the dust. He created you and I. And then he breathed into us the breath of life. But what he did is he gave us dominion, and he even said, told the Godhead, Elohim, the Godhead, I am is plural. He said, we're going to give man dominion over the earth. In other words, God did something that we are still struggling to understand sometimes. He even locked himself out of man's business unless man invite him into it. He said, let's give man, let's make man run our kingdom on the earth, on the ground. We'll run the kingdom in the third heaven. And Satan, you got to see this, he trapped in the middle. R. Kelly was trapped in the closet. Satan trapped in the middle. God is in the third heaven. Paul said, I seen a man. He was caught up in the third heavens where he saw unspeakable things that he couldn't even utter. He was caught up. You and I, we dwell in the earth realm. We are spirits with bodies. Because when you give up the ghost or your spirit, the body goes back to the dust, and the spirit goes to be with the Lord. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. What you and I wrestle against is spirits that don't have bodies. 